Hi, I'm Kerry. I'm the host of Best of Us Investors. I'm a retired financial advisor. I'm 77 years old, and you all have known that for quite some time. But I got a new proclamation today. I'm sick. Something's wrong with me, and I don't know what it is. Uh, I wake up in the morning, and I feel relatively good. Well, let me correct that. Last Saturday, I woke up in the morning, and I feel like I'd been hit by a Hillion truck and run over and spit out the backside. Every muscle in my body hurt. I was in pain. I dropped down to my knees and I did my yoga to stretch my body out to try to get it to go away, and it helped. I then went on and did my daily routine, and by 5.30 in the afternoon, I was sitting on the sofa watching the news, and I went into trembling. I was shivering. My body was totally exhausted, and I was going into body shock. By six o'clock, I was in bed. I was shaking, I was shivering, and I, I slept until six o'clock in the morning, 12 hours, got up, and I was okay. I went ahead, did my routine again. I noticed at the time I went to the bathroom, my urine was bright yellow. I mean, it turned that bowl as yellow as it could be, and it smelled like a Christmas ham. And I thought, what the hell is going on? So I went through my routine. I went to watch the evening news again at 7 uh, or at 5.30. And again, I went into shock. My body started shivering. I was shaking. I was curled up. I asked Nita to give me a blanket. I put on a coat. And the room was at 72 degrees. Within a half hour, I was back in bed. I called my doctor. I said, something's going wrong with me. I think I, lo I focused on the urine and the smell. And, and they said, well, you need to come in and have some lab work done. And, and so I said, okay, I'll get that done. But then I got to thinking, what, what if I was out in some rural area or some, some third world country and this was all happening to me and I didn't have access to medical care, or I was afraid to go to medical care because I couldn't afford it. I'm a 40 percenter. 40 percent of the people in the world have access to health care and in actuality can afford it and will and, and have the mobility to get to it. What if I was a widower and I didn't have my wife to tell me, you better go get that done. I'd die. That's where we are in this world, and we don't have to be there. We have the technology that this doesn't even have to happen to carry. And that's what I want to talk to you about in this video today. I want to talk to you about how I've structured my portfolio to best to invest in the future, because this has to change. Our ancestors have made some terrible mistakes. They screwed up our bodies by taking on environments and, and foods and, and messing up our genome. They've polluted our planet with, with uh, uh, whatever that's causing global warming and, and, and polluted our air, and we have to change that. And that's how I invest. I invest in the companies that are going to change the way I live. I do not care what's going to happen in the, tomorrow because I know the people up there who change what happens in tomorrow don't give a damn about whether Carrie dies or not. They're worried about my privacy. Duff with that. When I go to the doctor, he sticks his finger up my ass. I mean, what the hell? Where, where's privacy? I'll talk to you more about that after I tell you I'm not your financial advisor. I'm certainly not talking to you like any financial advisor ever has. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I wear a watch. It's a Fitbit. Some of you wear an Apple watch. This watch, not this one, but its predecessors, have been tracking my heart rate for the last seven years. This watch tracks my heart rate as I sleep, tracks my body temperature, tracks um, uh, the, the, my, it, my 
uh, the number of steps I take, how my heart rate affects that. It knows everything that is going on in my body. And then it takes that data and compares it to the data, similar data, of millions of people around the world. But Google's not allowed to share that with my doctor. That would be violation of my privacy. I sent spit in a tube and sent it to 23andMe, and they know, they know, as a through genome sequencing, my propensity for cancer. My mother died of cancer. My daughter died of cancer. My father died of cancer. My brothers have had cancer. But they aren't allowed to share that with me because that may be a violation of my privacy. It's my privacy. Let me determine if it's a violation. They aren't allowed to share that with my doctor. That's bullshit. This is my life. I should control that. Now, whether I wear a mask and, 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 and infect you, yeah, you should have a voice in that. But as far as me knowing whether I have a propensity for cancer or if my urine is, is a problem, and Sanford and Harvard have already developed a smart toilet. I should have my urine and my poop analyzed every morning, but somebody's holding it back. Somebody's keeping it from me. I, I should have that. The technology is here and I'm investing in it. I've recognized that we are at the verge of a total change in our world, that we are going to become conscious as citizens to preserve our world in the future. Our ancestors didn't do that. They invested in oil. They invested in internal combustion engines. They had their choice back in the 1920s whether to have electric cars or internal combustion engines. And to support the oil industry and to pollute our world, they chose internal combustion engines. They didn't give a damn. Now, for sure, they didn't know any better, but I do and you do. And so we need to invest in the companies that are going to change our world for the better. Why isn't this happening? Well, uh, because you're not demanding it. You're not investing in it. Look at my portfolio. You see how many of the healthcare stocks that you're invested in, how many of the uh, lithium mining stocks that you're invested in. 23andMe, are you invested in that? Or are you invested in oil? Are you invested in meat processors who are polluting our world? Are you invest or are you investing in artificial intelligence? that are going to make our world a better place. Is this something new? No. I want you to know that in, let's see, when was it? In 20, in 1977, Richard Nixon passed the Cancer Act. This is in 1977. And the Cancer Act basically said that uh, they were going to find, a. it was in 71, a cure for cancer. That was followed up by, President Obama and, tw uh, and, and Joe Biden in 26, after Joe lost his son to cancer, that they were going to declare war on cancer. Well, Joe, well, Obama, Richard, 1,632 people died yesterday in the United States from cancer. 1,632. How has your war been going? No, you haven't been paying attention. You have. You don't know. You don't know who Editus is. You don't know who CRISPR is. I promise you I would share with you my portfolio. This is something that most people only do on their Patreon, and you got to pay to see it. But I think this is important. I think this is, this is my contribution. This is my declaration on cancer that Richard Nixon couldn't pull through and that uh, President Obama and Joe Biden couldn't pull through. This is my declaration and, and that 
this is how I think you should invest because this is how I invest. And you're going to see I've broken it down into my big six. These are the people who are involved in anything and everything. This is Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Meta, and uh, NVIDIA. These are companies that you got to be clueless if you don't invest in. Then I have my healthcare rev revolution, and I've broken them into genome therapies. That's CRISPR, Caribou, Editus, Nutella, AADI, uh, and Beam. These are the people who are going to stick a needle in my arm and take cancer out of my body, take Parkinson's out of my body, take Alzheimer's out of my body. These are the people who are going to save my life. And then there's um, uh, uh, Illumina, and uh, Pacific Biosciences. These are the genome sequencers. They're going to go into my body and take out and, and, and get a picture of my genome so the genome therapy companies can correct any problems that exist. And then you've got me. This is 23andMe. These are the people who will give me some power and give me my genome sequence if the government will let them do it uh, so that that I know what my propensity for cancer is, and I can walk into my doctor and say, hey, let's, let's address this potential problem. But no, right now I can't do that because 23andMe can't share that information with me because it come, somehow it's an invasion of my privacy. That's bullshit. Um, then we have uh, Quantum Psi and NA. UT. These are people who do protein sequence. Quantum Psi actually has a, a program where they, they can do a blood test in my bathroom and put it into the cloud and tell me, uh, what, tell me if I have a urinary tract infection or if I have an infected liver or whatever. Um, why don't I have that now? If the technology is available and I'm 77 years old and I'm on Medicare, why isn't my government giving that to me? Okay, then we come down to um, the protein sequencers. And then, then I, I invest in the broken supply chain, and that's 3D printing. Now I'm getting my ass kicked on those. And then I invest in the metaverse and in the last three weeks, that's fallen out of favor. You're, you're investing in oil, aren't you? Mm -hmm. uh, electric vehicles, I'm invested in uh, the, the mining companies that are, that are coming up with lithium to have the batteries. No, I'm not invested in the automobile companies because they happen to be in the automobile industry. And we know that nobody makes any money selling cars. Um, then I'm in cybersecurity. And um, uh, the um, uh, fin fintech, and so that's kind of where I'm at. And then I've got a moonshot down there on that list. So that's my portfolio currently today. It looks like it's a little over nine hundred thousand dollars. I do have some other money over in other, in, but this this is my my active portfolio. I'll probably go be going in and making some adjustments in this, but um, this is my vote that we need to do something about the world we live in and we need to change the way we live because our ancestors have screwed it up. And now it's up to us to invest in the companies that are going to make this planet survivable. And if you invest in any of the oil companies, shame on you. You are ignoring, you are totally ignoring your responsibility to the planet. Uh, you, I would challenge you, write your senator, write your House of Representatives, and give them the names of the stocks in my portfolio, and you ask them, what do these people do? What are they working towards? And you're going to get a, a blank stare. They have no idea. Why? Because you aren't demanding it. You aren't demanding a cure for cancer. Hell, if I lived in Brazil, out in the woods, with what's going on in my body right now, I'd die. 60% of the people in the world, if you replaced them with me, they'd die. 
because they don't have access to the to the medical care and they don't have a smart toilet and they don't have a smart mirror and they don't have a, a quantum psi a uh, blood test that they can take every day? Why not? Because you don't demand it. You don't invest in it. So how can you expect to get it? No. I watch Squawk Box. I watch Bloomberg. Who do they have coming on there? The oil executives. What the is that about? Those are the people who are, who are polluting our world. They aren't investing in electric vehicles. They aren't, they, they aren't investing in solar energy. Why are you investing in them? Stop it. Send a message. If everybody, everybody would say, no, I will not invest in Exxon Mobil, Shell, BP, because you're killing me. I'm sick. I'm going to get it fixed. Because I'm lucky. I have access. Many don't. It's time for you to put your money where your mouth is. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.